千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Eric Lin, where we delve deeply into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. So, at the highest level of the Tao, a leader in the Tao tradition, in the Tao context, in the Tao concept, would act as an agent of change, a catalyst for positive transformation. When you act as in this role, agent of change. A catalyst. You may not act like a conventional leader, and where you are leading people to, where you are guiding people, is what is the most natural and beneficial. Because the accomplishment at the end of that process seems so natural, it seems exactly like what people want. The people who are Uh, experiencing this kind of leadership may assume that they did all by themselves because it's what they wanted to do all along. So the person behind the scenes who encouraged them, who pushed them, nudged them in the right direction, may simply, you know, satisfied that the work is done, may simply uh, disappear, may simply fade off, knowing that. It's accomplished. The Tao has been accomplished. So this is this is not easy to see in the world because it is so rare. But let me bring you some comparisons between what is typical, what is mundane, what is conventional, versus what the Tao is when it comes to leadership. So what I have here is a table. There are different attributes related to leadership on the left-hand side. So that's the world of leadership, if you will. The typical leader, I use a crown, as you can see, to represent that. This is sort of the the conventional signifier. This is the symbol of power in the typical、uh, material world setting. And then on the right, of course, I have the yin and yang symbol representing the Tao. So the middle column will be the、uh, will be what the typical leader will do, will think about,、uh, is like. And then on the right is the Tao concept in comparison. So this will illustrate how they are quite different. And let's start out with position. In the typical leadership scenario. The typical leader would be topmost and foremost. You know, it's quote unquote lonely at the top, at the top of the pyramid. So the typical leader would occupy the top position in a hierarchy, or would be in the forefront, most visible, leading the charge, so to speak. We're all very used to this kind of leadership because it is so high profile and so highly visible. The Tao concept is actually the opposite. The Tao concept is below and behind. What does that mean? It means a sage, a sage leader, supports people, lifts them up. People do not feel the burden of leadership. They, they don't feel like the sage leader, the masterful leader, is pushing down on them from the top. Now let's talk about communication. This is where it is most apparent.、Uh, whether you have the typical leader or an extraordinary leader who understands the Tao. So in the mundane world, the leader, the mundane leader, orders people around, and is also the one who lectures the team, the people that are、uh, in the team. And when the typical leader lectures, there's usually a lot of shoulds. You should do this. You should do that. 
you should do it this way. You should do it my way. A lot of shoulds. So what about the leader of the DAO, the leader in the DAO context? Such a leader listens to people. So the DAO leadership is one that listens more than ordering people around or lecturing them. Listening is the key to finding out what uh, the team, the team members are experiencing, what they're hoping they can accomplish, to understand them better, to find out about their concerns. And when the typical leader lectures the team, think about how this is a mindset that reflects upon the typical leader thinking that where would the team be without me? The team is dependent on me to tell them what to do and how to do it. The Tao leadership is different in wanting the team to be independent and self-sufficient. The sage leader would be careful to avoid creating some sort of dependency, wanting people to, to be at their best on their own, of their own initiative, to develop and grow them as individuals. Now, what about the third factor there, support? By support, I am really talking about loyalty. How would the typical leader see the concept of loyalty and how would the DAO leader see the same concept? The typical leader would demand support. This means demand loyalty. You must be loyal to me. You must give me loyalty first before I will do nice things for you. You can guess that the DAO concept is the opposite. The sage leader, the DAO leadership provides support to the entire team. The DAO leader gives his loyalty, his or her loyalty to the team before anything else. And everything is for the team first. And the next one here, build. Uh, so this is the question of what would such a leader build, depending on the type. So for the typical leader, the mundane leader, the building is all about the power base, the base of his or her power. He is building to strengthen it and to expand the base of power. What about the Dao leader? Well, you can imagine it's going to be very different. The Dao leader isn't building the power base, but building community where people can freely interact, exchange their ideas, and support one another. So very different. Now, it so happens that when you follow the Tao of leadership, you get powerful side effects that the community you build was not meant to be your power base when you are following the Tao of leadership, and yet it becomes your most ardent supporters. It becomes the base for your fans. That was never the original intention. It was a community for the community, and yet it becomes even more enduring than anything that the typical leader can provide. So let's continue on. Focus, this is about the orientation. The typical leader, the focus is on being the authority. I am the authority, I made the decisions, you must come to me, you must get my okay, you must obtain my approval, being the authority. The focus, the orientation of the Tao leader, not the same, being of service. How can I serve? So here you can tell that the concept is not completely foreign to the Western mindset. In the West, there is a concept of leadership that is beginning to be to attract a lot of notice. It's called servant leadership. It's a different name for what Lao Tzu had in mind 2,500 years ago. The sage who's a leader would be the servant of the team, of the people, of the community that he serves. 
So it's all about service, not about authority or the true leader of the DAO. And then one last one, easy to see, for the achievements of the team, whatever they are, the typical leader would be someone who wants to take credit for that. And this is this goes back to the first one, the typical leader is topmost and foremost, and therefore would demand that the achievements of the team are his achievements. Whereas the DAO leadership, rather than to take credit of the team's work, would give credit to the team, even for his own contributions, because the team comes first. So these are, I think, simple ways to see the difference between the DAO of leadership uh, with and comparing, contrasting that with the mundane kind of leadership. So you can also tell uh, this is uh, a, a good way to think about it because you know one may one may uh, just by reading the words of Lao Tzu, one may think that well, uh, so lack of uh, interference to refrain from interference does that mean you don't actually do anything uh, as a leader? Well, when you can see here, what you can see here on the rightmost column under the Dao concept, you can tell that there's actually quite a bit that the Dao leader will do. And some of that can be thought of as interfering with this and that, uh, you know, in the context that while there's no community in place, I'm going to start building a community. Uh, am I interfering with the natural order of things? Perhaps, but it's what needs to be done. So non-interference is not a complete lack of interference, just like Wu Wei is not a complete lack of actions. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us travel safely. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.